the Europeans encountered many new people groups as they began their colonization of the rest of the world. Some of the tribes, cultures, and nations that they interacted with had stories of other groups of people that had lived in their lands in the past. This isn't a definite list. There are a lot of interesting groups out there that I won't be covering. Tonight I'll be talking about a few of these groups that went missing before the colonists arrived. The Fremont peoples began to stop hunting and gathering and started farming around 2,000 years ago. They began to settle in central Utah near present-day Capitol Reef National Park and got their name from the river that flows through the park. Recent archaeological studies revealed that they lived throughout Colorado, Idaho, and Nevada at the height of their cultural power. They lived in simple rock shelters and dug pit houses. Multiple families lived together in these homes, forming small bands. These bands would often switch locations and move to their communities, resulting in distinctive groups that would go on to become Hopi, Zuni, and other tribes. The Fremont often hung out with the Pueblo group, who you might remember from the Utah Iceberg video, with the Pueblans constructing homes on the cliffs, while the Fremont lived on the ground. They often painted pictographs, art painted on rock surfaces, and constructed petroglyphs, art carved into the rock. They often drew anthropomorphic beings that featured trapezoidal bodies and intricate jewelry, and made detailed faces in colorful clothing and put it on them. Everything from snakes, deer, and dogs, to sheep, birds, and lizards were drawn in this fashion. Abstract shapes and geometric designs were other things that the Fremont tribes enjoyed drawing. They constructed moccasins from deer hides, and used the dew claw of the animal as a kind of hobnailed boot, allowing them to gain traction on cliffs. The Fremont enjoyed their lifestyle and did quite well up until around 1300 AD. They abandoned their villages at around that time, for an unknown reason. Most likely, it was because new groups of migrants were beginning to come from the southwestern Great Basin area, and the Fremont disappeared. Their fate remains unknown, but it's assumed that they were assimilated or driven off by these newcomers. The Chachapoya were a civilization called the Cloud Warriors by the Incas. They existed in the northern highlands of Peru from around 800 AD to 1470 AD. Their land consisted of mountain ranges, great waterfalls, and immense canyons. A group of small kingdoms would unify in this area at around 800, constructing terraces and acting as traders for the communities in the Andes and the Amazon Basin. Their land would soon grow to include over half a million people, with their capital, Coelep, becoming a great city over the centuries. Coelep featured walls that reached almost 60 feet tall, and were full of the interred skeletons of the local dead. It included hundreds of circular dwellings, and a temple that may have had up to 250,000 inhabitants at its peak. The city was abandoned after the conquest of the Incas, and was later rediscovered in 1843 by a Peruvian judge. Other structures that were made by the people have been found since then, with the ruin at La Penitenciaria de Meseta discovered in 2006. The Chachapoya had no known written language, and current historians have collected their current knowledge of the kingdom from the funerary sites of the Chachapoya. They built their mausoleums into the rock and decorated them with images using red pigments. Red was a popular color within their society, often seen in cave drawings, sepulchers, and on clothing. They were also known for having a strong warrior ethos, refusing to bow to the Inca Empire in the late 15th century. 
Later, conquistadors claimed that they had fair hair and pale skin, which led some in Europe to postulate that they were descendants of the Vikings. Archaeologists have uncovered many fortresses and grave sites that were constructed during their fight against the Inca. Their hilltop forts would eventually fall in 1475, and they were briefly subjugated. Some Spanish accounts of the Inca Chachapoya War revealed that the Chachapoya continued to rise up against their oppressors for several years. Their rebellion went so well that the Incas had to reconquer the highlands yet again, and once again took heavy losses from the rebels. A few members of this group would actually survive to see the coming of the conquistadors, but were allegedly annihilated soon after the fall of the Inca from disease and conflict. However, recent genetic tests of some tribes living in northern Ecuador revealed traces of the same DNA taken from Chachapoya bodies. Some were able to escape the coming of the Spanish. This continent has not been colonized by a known people group. However, a Polynesian group may have discovered the continent far before the Europeans. Explorers like Captain Cook in the 18th century tried to locate the continent, but failed, with Antarctica remaining unseen up until 1820. Linguists from New Zealand have published a study in the Journal of the Royal Society of New Zealand that claims that a Polynesian explorer named Hui Te Raniora voyaged far south of New Zealand. They interviewed local Maori groups and uncovered an oral history about this explorer. It said that Raniora set out in approximately 600 AD and continued a long way south. He and his crew saw wonderful things, rocks that grow out of the sea, a frozen sea, bare rock, and the female that dwells in those mountainous waves, whose tresses wave about in the water and on the surface of the sea. This sounds like they were describing icebergs, potentially the rocky shores of Antarctica and Thaw, and according to some, Southern Ocean Bull Kelp. If the stories are true, the Polynesians discovered the continent almost 1,200 years before the rest of the world. The Champa Kingdom existed in Central and South Vietnam and extended to Laos and Cambodia at the peak of its power. It was established in the 2nd century and continued on to the 17th century. It was founded by a Chinese Han official who had been acting as the governor of Hue City. The Han Empire collapsed, and this governor elected to stay put and create a breakaway kingdom. Champa would incorporate several native tribes and continue to fight Chinese colonies in Tonkin. The kingdom came under Indian influence soon after and began to decentralize into small states centered on the coast of Vietnam. They began to develop a powerful navy in response to invaders from Java and China. Champa continued to struggle with Chinese invasion and broke free of Chinese influence in the 6th century. The kingdom continued to struggle with the Khmer Empire and other kingdoms. Constant warfare with the Mongols and other empires resulted in the Champa being eventually annexed. Overall, I found this culture really interesting due to the fact that it was an Asian kingdom that still featured elements of the oceanic cultures, along with the Indian culture. A civilization once inhabited the reaches of the Saharan Desert in southern Libya. The Garamantes were a tribal people that moved into a region of the desert called the Pheasant. It's estimated that they arrived at around 1000 BC. The Greek historian Herodotus wrote about them in his histories in the 5th century BC. He said that they were a great nation, known for their date farming and breeding of cattle. He also said that they used four horse chariots to hunt the cave-dwelling tribes that lived to the southeast of their kingdom. 
the Roman historian Tacitus, noted that they often raided Roman coastal settlements, and military records have shown that the Romans sometimes crossed into Garamantes' territory to take revenge. The capital of their kingdom was called Garama, and was uncovered by archaeologists in the 1960s, and is estimated to have had a population of around 6,000. Further excavations reveal that the Garamantes had eight other major cities, and around 20 other smaller settlements. The elites built their houses out of stone, and the common people constructed theirs out of mud brick. These homes had dedicated wells and hearths, and functioned as both businesses and homes. Their capital contained a bathhouse, along with several large government buildings and places of worship. They entered into a trade agreement with Rome, and their caravans transferred goods from other Saharan kingdoms to the Roman African provinces. Metalworking and textile production facilities have been uncovered. Evidence has been found that they mined in the Tibesti Mountains. Their writing was closely related to Egyptian hieroglyphics, and they possessed their own common language. The Garamantes also had a large irrigation system, and tapped into aquifers to grow produce. The kingdom would last for almost 1600 years, falling sometime in the late 7th century, due to the Sahara worsening and becoming more difficult to live in. While this kingdom was a neighbor to the Romans, I thought I'd include it due to the fact that European explorers only came across traces of it, and for the fact that it was pretty obscure. Alright, that is it for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this, definitely check out the other videos on this channel, and consider subscribing. Take care.